Welcome, my name is Harald Sack. And I'm Tabia Tietz. And this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number three, querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle. In this very first lecture of Sparkle, we will teach you how to query RDF or RDFS with the help, of course, of Sparkle. And Sparkle is, as you see here in the Semantic Web Technology stack, it's here the red part of the Semantic Web layer that we are talking about here. Okay. Let's go ahead. What is Sparkle? Let me switch on for that the laser pointer. So as you see here, Sparkle is based on the client-server principle. So there is a Sparkle endpoint, which is connected to a server. And of course, we have a client and all this is working on the web. So this is based on a web server and a web client. So the web client usually runs on a browser. And then on top of the HTTP transport protocol, there is the Sparkle protocol. So your Sparkle query will simply be transported via HTTP from your client, that's your user interface in the browser, to the server, which means to the web server, and then to a Sparkle endpoint. Where exactly then? This is a triple store where RDF triples are stored, and there your Sparkle query is carried out and the result is transported back. How does a Sparkle endpoint look like? So this is a a small example, for example, this is the endpoint of DBpedia. So you always will find here the blue links on the side. If you click on them, you come directly there, you get directly there, and then you can, of course, play around with it. And all of the queries that we have here in the lecture, you can simply click on the links that we provide, and then you come directly to the Sparkle endpoint where you can carry out and play around with it by yourself. Okay, let's go into Medias Race and then start with an example. Yes, and since we already learned that Sparkle is a query language for RDF graph traversal, of course we need a graph to try this out. And we have prepared a graph for you, which might look a bit complicated in the beginning, but we will go through it step by step. And we prepared a graph with three books for you. The first book is 1984 and it's very simple. So we have a release date, which is 1949. It was written by George Orwell and it's a dystopian uh, novel. That's why it belongs yeah, here in the literary genre, dystopian. The next book is called Make Room, Make Room. And um, here we also have uh, a film connected to it, Soil and Green, which is actually based on the novel Make Room, Make Room. It, um, yeah, it's also a dystopian novel and uh, was written by Harry Harrison. And last but not least, we have here a book by Isaac Asimov, Foundation, which belongs to the Foundation series. And um, accordingly, the subsequent work here is Foundation and Empire. And it uh, yeah, belongs to, li to the literary genre of science fiction. And as I said, was written by Isaac Asimov. Okay, let's get started to query exactly that kind of knowledge graph. What we need, of course, that you might know already when you do a query language for structured data, like for example, SQL, SQL, you, you need variables. So therefore also Sparkle needs variables. And these variables have to be bound to RDF terms. And to distinguish then variables from other stuff here in your Sparkle query, variables here, they are always introduced with a question mark. So question mark title would be a variable for titles, question mark author would be a variable for author, and question mark date, of course, then for date. So this is exactly in the same way as in SQL. And also in the same way, you query for these variables in a select statement. So you will have in a, have in a Sparkle, like in a SQL statement, select, and then comes, of course, a list of variables that will be bound then to further Sparkle expressions. And the result of a select statement is a table. So the same thing that you are used to for usual SQL queries. So you will get a table, of course, and then this table has as columns exactly the variables that you have listed there, title, author, and date. And if we would query now for all of the content of the books that we have here in our Example, we would have here 1984 as a title, Foundation as a title, and Make Room, Make Room as a title, and the three authors, George Orwell, Isaac Asimov, Harry Harrison, and the release dates here for the books. Okay, so, so much for the variables. Next thing, of course, what does Sparkle really do? 
indifference to SQL, which works strictly on tables, Sparkle has to work on graphs. And what it does there is, of course, graph pattern matching. First of all, when you do your query, you are using also RDF turtle serialization structures. So this is all phrased in turtle that we know already. The rest of it, of course, when we are traversing the graph, there we do pattern matching with exactly these kind of triple patterns or graph patterns that we are creating. What's a graph pattern? It's quite easy. A graph pattern simply consists of turtle, a turtle expression that you have and you connect variables with it. So at specific points in your triple, you might have variables. For example, if I want to ask for books and their authors via a specific property that I give here, so it's a property from DBpedia, DBO author, I simply write, okay, give me all of the books. This means books will be a variable. So I have the variable that I call book. Then I have as a property DBO author. And as an object, I have, of course, all of the authors. This gives then the variable author. And since this is turtle, of course, after the triple pattern, I close it with a period. So that's strictly turtle plus variables. And of course, here you see the variables. Okay, how does this now work on our graph? What we do is we simply go with that pattern that we have defined, which means we have here um, book, DBO author, and then the author. We, we go over or we traverse the entire graph and look what structures do exactly match. Here we have, for example, a book, DBO author, and George Orwell. Here we have the book, foundation, and we have author, Isaac Asimov. And we have make room, make room, author Harry Harrison. And this is then exactly how Sparkle works. The graph is completely traversed and of course the uh, according uh, triples will be returned. Now let's take a look at complex graph pattern matching. But it's actually not so complex. So let's see. Sparkle graph patterns can be combined to form complex and conjunctive queries for graph traversal. But let's take a look at this example. So here we have a first pattern, which is we have the variable book, we have DBO author, so a URI, and then another variable author. And then we have a second pattern below. We have again the variable book, we have the literary genre, the URI, and again genre as a variable. And what we mean with conjunctive queries here is that, that both patterns are connected with a logical AND, and the variable book here means exactly the same book. So for exactly the same book, we ask for a specific author and for the literary genre. So we refer here to the very same book. Now let's make it even a bit more complex. In our second example, we have a very specific book in mind, here with the URI, DBpedia resource, Brave New World. And here we are looking for a DBO author and then um, yeah, the variable author. In the second pattern below, we also refer to author and this is the very same author from the first graph pattern. And then uh, we yeah, ask for the DBO birthplace and again a birthplace variable, which is then again the very same variable as in the third graph pattern, where we ask for the birthplace and a population, and then we have the variable population. That means for the book, The Brave New World, we are looking for an author. For this author, we are looking for the birthplace, and for this very same birthplace, we are looking for the population. Quite easy. So then, we have everything ready to do our first real Sparkle example. And if you look at it here, you, it might already seem rather familiar to you. So our example will be search for all authors and the titles of their notable works. So how do we do that? First of all, we will need a few namespaces to make the query shorter. And we have here, in the same way like we have in an RDF a definition, we have prefixes. The only difference is in RDF, the prefix starts with an ampersand. In Sparkle, we don't use ampersand. We simply say prefix and then comes the acronym and then comes the prefix definition. Again, the URI is here given in angle brackets. And the second difference is we don't close this with a period here in Sparkle, so they follow simply without a period. 
Don't worry if you make a period there and send it to a Sparkle processor, it will point out that there is a, of course, syntax error and it will tell you exactly where the syntax error is and this will usually be the period here. Okay, that's the first thing, we have the prefixes. Next thing we have to do, of course, we have to do the select statement. So this is like in SQL, we say select and then what are we going to select? What are the variables that we need? So let's have a look. We need the authors and the titles of the notable work. So what we want to have in the end are author name and title. The next component that we need is of course, so from which graph are we querying exactly that question? And here we are using DBpedia. So we have already heard about DBpedia, which is a huge knowledge graph where all of this information might be gathered. So this specifies the graph to be queried. And then in the same way, like for a SQL query, we have the where part. And in the where part in Sparkle, we combine all of the Sparkle graph patterns that we want to be matched. And you have heard about the graph patterns and here we need a few because we want first to have the authors. So the what, what's an author? So we will see that an author is somebody who is of type DBO writer. You could also express this in another way, but this is one way to determine what is an author in DBpedia. We will look for all of the class members of the class DBO writer there. And since we do not only want to have the URI, we want to have the name, we are asking for the RDFS label here of the author and we call it then author name, second variable that we have here. And you see here that author name is then in the end also put out in the output. And of course we want to ask for the titles of the notable works, which means the author has a notable work, which then is a work. Work is a variable we need only here inter as an intermediate variable, we don't want to give it back. And we say of course the work, we need the title of that and then we say okay work should have the RDFS label title, which is then also given back here in the select query. And this is of course the very first query that we do and now Let's be adventurous and click here on that little blue link that should bring us directly to a Sparkle endpoint. Yay! So this is the DBpedia Sparkle endpoint and in here you see exactly the query that we are carrying out and you see here, I scroll a bit down, we have here select from and that's the work clause that we have formulated and now let's execute this query. And you see here lots of results. So what's that? Caleb Carr and then we have here the Italian secretary. I don't know that word but it's all of the authors and all of the stuff you are looking for there and um, yeah I guess it will be lots of results. You see here we might scroll down. This is a huge list that doesn't find an end. So go ahead and explore it and play around with your Sparkle query. Okay so let's go back here to our presentation and continue with the next query. If I want to refine that query further, so first look here on the right side. Again, let's search for all authors and the titles of the notable works. And what I want to do now is I want to modify the output that you saw here. I want to order the authors in ascending order. And of course I want to not to see all of these thousands that I have seen here. I want to see only the first 100 results. And I also don't want to start right at the let's say beginning, I want to start with an offset of 10. Why I'm doing that? Simply to show you that this is possible in a Sparkle query, not that it makes much sense. So how to do that? So I have here these so-called solution sequence modifiers and the first one is I give an order. So my output, the list should be created here in ascending order. So order by ASC means ascending, there is also DESC for descending but it should be ascending and then I have to of course to say yeah we have several columns here according to which column should it be ordered. Uh, it should be ordered by the author name in ascending order so it should start at A and end at Z usually. Okay then I say limit, this says okay I limit the results only to the number I've given here that's 100 and then I say okay don't start at the beginning, start at an offset. So this is the keyword offset and then I need here the 10. So it's from 10 and then to number 110. And again we are being adventurous and are clicking on exactly that thing. So you see here again the query we are going there and we have here the se uh, sequence solution at, uh, 
um, identifiers and then we click on execute. And you see here it starts with an Arabic title <laughs> and all of the titles are Arabic and it seems as if Arabic alphabet of course is of course or the characters there are before the Latin characters. Of course it would now be interesting to play around and see when the very first English titles come but this will be then subject of further queries that you can of course uh, try out on your own. Okay now Let's further refine our query to learn a bit more possibilities that you have with Sparkle. One of the important constituents there is, of course, you do not only want to query for graph patterns, probably you want to put in filter constraints because you want to only select specific patterns that have specific additional properties. So let's see at the following example. Search for all authors and the titles of their notable works. So that's exactly the same as before. And now I want only to look for works that have more than 500 pages. And of course, again, I want to limit the results to the first 100. So more than 500 pages. How do I do that? There is a new keyword that you see here. This is a filter constraint. And that means for the result of exactly these graph patterns I have here, I add here after the last graph pattern, for which exactly this filter condition holds. So I have here again a new property. The work should have the number of pages and I have here the variable pages. And of course I also want to output here the pages as you see here. And then I say simply before I close this expression with the period, there comes the filter expression. And after the filter expression, this is given in parentheses, I say that the variable pages, this is usually an integer, the number of pages should be larger than 500. And then I close here the pattern. And again here limit by 100. And now let's see what happens if we exactly then click on that. Sparkle query. So you see here again filter pages uh, greater 500. And I simply click on select and you see here of course again Arabic stuff. And then it is also a Dan Simmons novel don't know that one. Los Vampiros de la, de la Mente. Wow, that's great. And this has 636 pages. So I did not expect something like this. And yeah, you see here that's a lot of Dan Simmons stuff in different languages, as you see here. That's Portuguese. What else do we have? Ukrainian. Great. Yeah, so that's possibly too much information. But we can further refine it later on and you will see how. Okay. Let's get back to the presentation and we continue with the possibilities of further filter constraints. Yes, and these filter expressions can be further combined with further conditions. And luckily Sparkle allows us to use unary operators for that. For example, if um, the condition is Boolean, then we are allowed to negate that result. And we do that with the exclamation mark, as you probably know. If our result is numeric, we can also um, make this positive or negative with a plus and minus, as you can see in the second and third row. And then we can also check, is there even a result here? And this we can do with bound. And then we can check for our variables, is it a URI, is it a blank node, or is it a literal? We can also transform a literal or URL into strings. We can also ask for a specific language here in our filter expression. And we can also ask for a specific data type. That means the result type will then be a URI that gives us the specific data type. And um, this makes, of course, querying much more fun and also much more elaborate. And let's try this out in one of our example queries. So here we search for authors and their books and we want to filter the results for English labels and for dystopian novels and we want to limit the results to the first 100. And the query works just like the other queries we have seen before but here we don't just filter for something for a simple variable here we also use the language expression. That means for the variable author name, 
we also want to filter for English labels only. And the same below. So we have a work here. The work has a specific author and here we use the author variable again. This work also has some kind of title and also this title should be in English language. And then we have another constraint here and this is that the work should be in the subject of dystopian novel. And as we said before, the results should be limited to 100. Let's see how that works for us. Yes, it worked. So you can see here on the left side we have the author name and on the right side we have the title and all labels that we have in our table are English labels. For example, we have here um, Philip Pullman and the Book of Dust. And this is all in English labels as we want it. Right. And this concludes the uh, first glimpse of what Sparkle looks like. And also, of course, we want to put this in practice. And this is why for the next lecture we want to take you on an excursion to get to know the DBpedia knowledge graph, a very big knowledge graph, and we want to show you how it, um, yeah, what it looks like, how it works, and then, of course, how to query DBpedia.